well, you had mentioned that like 70 to 80 percent of your clients, you know, are dealing with some sort of anxiety. Um, I've dealt with anxiety myself. I've shared that on here and, and maybe I'll tell some stories here in a moment. But, you know, I would say it, it's very similar in our practice as well. Um, we, we're seeing a, a, a great deal of it. Certainly it's gone up. Uh, since the pandemic and things of that nature. But do you have any any theories or thoughts on why we're seeing so much of that, why anxiety has become so prevalent in our world today? I think that we, we have to think about why we have um, this feeling, this experience to begin with, right? So if you think think about our ancestors, they, they had anxiety too, but when would they have anxiety? Um, they're roaming the woods or the desert or wherever they lived and they see a bear or a tiger. And their nervous system takes over and anxiety kicks in, right, to save them. And within like a brief second, they have to decide what to do. Am I going to fight? Am I going to run away, right? That's the fight or flight. Or maybe it, it makes more sense to collapse, to go into a free state. Um, and that, that is what will save me, right? And this is not a conscious decision. This is your nervous system taking over. This is an automatic pilot. But it's over within 10 seconds, maybe 50 seconds. And you go back to normal. Now think about the stressors that we're dealing with, right? So I work with clients, work for a company that just laid off 10% of its workforce. And there are rumors in the office, right, that there will be another round of layoffs. And now they have to carry this anxiety, not for 50 seconds, but they might carry this anxiety for days, for weeks, for months, right? Think about people who struggle financially. We have to pay a mortgage. And they're very anxious about it. And again, they have to carry this anxiety for extended periods of time. Our nervous system is not wired to tolerate this experience for more than a few seconds. So if you have to carry this experience chronically for a long time, it starts to take a toll on you. And this is the burnout, right? So I think this is one idea that I wanted to share, um, share with you about why I think we see so much anxiety because the stressors are very different. So I think this is one component of why anxiety is so much more prevalent these days. Yeah, we're kind of a, a middle middle generation here. We've got old operating systems, but new age stressors, right? And so we haven't evolutionarily made the transition. And who knows if we will make the transition? Who knows if we want to make that transition? But um, yeah, we're doing we're doing sprint work over the course of a marathon. And that's no, I've never seen anybody sprint a marathon, right? <laughs> so that's tough. And I, I think about you as well. And I, I work with a lot of children and your, your experience you described about, I could almost tell when I walked in the door whether I needed to stay or go, right? So that's a child who has a constant, uh, at least sense of danger, if not actual danger in the home. And uh, I've heard lots of children talk about that, that have abusive parents, right? I could tell by the way, dad opened the front door, or whether he closed his car door, or the way he, if he ran to the fridge and got a beer instead of, you know, an iced tea, I knew it was going to be a bad night, you know? And so you wire yourself to constantly monitor, you know, for threats. Um, so in your example of the evolutionary man, you know, when he sees a, a tiger or a bear, um, some people are living with tigers and bears. And so... Yeah, and I think you're alluding to, I think, another source um, of why we see so much anxiety, and I think that's trauma, right? Um, there's so much trauma that people are going through that it was never addressed. Um, and what do we do with trauma? Many times we want to dissociate. We don't want to think about it. We, want, we don't want to talk about it because we don't want to relive it. It's very scary. It's very painful. It's very overwhelming. But the trauma is manifesting in other ways. And um, I think anxiety is one way in which um, untreated trauma expresses itself. Um, So I think that's, if you ask me, that's another reason um, why we see so much anxiety these days. And this may be a sense of awareness or education, but that word trauma has shown up a lot more recently too, right? From the adverse childhood experiences and things like that. I think people are aware of that word trauma, um, but I think it means something different to every individual person. And so there's that a little bit of like, well, he's had it worse than me. Do I even have a right to have have trauma or experience trauma? So um, let's unpack that a little bit, if you don't mind. If you have somebody who comes into your practice and, and they you either reveal or identify trauma with them or they come in and say, like, I've, you know, you said you haven't processed, you haven't done the work around that trauma. Like, what, what does that look like for you and your patients? How do you get into that work and how do you help them work through traumatic experiences? Yeah, if you think about that, um, 
one basic element of trauma is lack of safety, right? And when I say lack of safety, it's not people immediately think just physical safety, right? You mentioned maybe an abusive parent, uh, maybe a violent parent, um, parent, but it can be emotional, right? And we need to feel safe because we're social creatures. So we want to feel safe physically, but also emotionally. Um, so if we want to work with trauma in, in our practice, the first thing that we need to do is to establish a sense of safety. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is where I always start. And I say, um, to establish a sense of safety, I said, few things need to happen here. One is that the control is in your hands, you being the client, right? So that means um, you decide if we talk about it, when we talk about it, how much we talk about it, where do we start to talk about it? It's not my decision. Um, your, foot is, your foot is on the gas pedal and on the brake. And you t tell me we can accelerate a little bit. And you can tell me we can slow down. So I think pacing is such a key element of trauma work. And the, the client needs to hold um, the, the, a sense of agency um, to pace themselves. I think this is so, so crucial. Um, and when, usually when you present it this way to clients, you see the immediate relief, right? Because the trauma was lack of control, lack of agency, right? And you're giving it to them, and that's very empowering. So I think this is where it should start, and that's really the foundation. We can talk more about that, but I think this is one of the key elements of working with trauma. No, I think you're right, because you think about our fears that we walk around with and sort of like fear of flying and things like that. It's like they won't let you in the cockpit to help out, right? You're just along for the ride. And <laughs> that can be a very kind of traumatic, uh, trauma-inducing experience. So.